So welcome everybody uh, to this tutorial session for AP Physics C. <clears throat> Today we will be solving questions or doing problems in forces. So feel free to ask questions um, whenever necessary. All right. Uh, let's start with the first question. <clears throat> A small toy car of mass M is given an initial push and allow to slide. It gradually slows down to rest. Assuming the coefficient of kinetic friction is mu k, what is the car's acceleration? Now take the direction of motion to be in the positive direction. We know that this is the direction in which the car is moving. But is this the direction of the acceleration? We don't know. Now what we know so far is the force is acting on the car. We have the weight of the car, mg. Um, we have the normal force. I'm just going to draw it here, though it's acting on the tires, n, acting on the car. And we have the friction force, kinetic friction, fk. So if we do the free body diagram for the car, we will have something like mg n fk now this is the direction of motion we know from newton's second law that the summation of f external is equal to ma right which means that the direction of motion is along the x direction, so we have 0 minus f of k should be equal to ma. By definition, f of k is mu k n, which is going to be mu k mg. So this would mean that negative mu mg is equal to ma. The m's can go away, and therefore the acceleration of the car is negative mu kg. So this is the acceleration of the car. Any questions? Do we need to memorize the formula like that? No. You, you'll be deriving a lot of these formulas. You don't have to memorize it. The force equals mu k n. Yeah, that's the definition of friction, right? Can I move forward? Now, keep in mind that we have, from what we did in class, we have six forces. Gravity, and the force of gravity between any two masses, Fg, is g m1 m2 over what r squared where this is m1 and this is m2 and they're both separated by a distance r and we know that the force of gravity is an attractive force between two objects two we talked about the normal force n which is a force that one surface exert on another pressing on it now the value of n depends on the circumstance but what we know is that the normal force is always perpendicular to the surface the third force we talked about was friction and there are two types of what friction you have static friction and you have kinetic friction static friction is defined by fk equal to what mu k n uh, sorry mu s n and kinetic friction f k is equal to mu k n what you need to understand is that static friction the direction of static friction can either be in the direction of motion or in the opposite direction of motion but it is determined by the direction in which the particle would do what would move. For example, if you are riding a bike and you're climbing a hill at a constant speed, you have a tendency to do what roll backwards. 
So the, fric the static friction force will be acting forward. But if you have a box and you're applying a box, the box is lying on the floor, forward, the static friction will be acting backwards. You understand that, right? So the direction of static friction may vary. But kinetic friction is easy. The direction of kinetic friction is always opposite to the direction of what? Motion. Um, the fourth force that we, we saw um, was the spring force. And this, is, this force basically obeys Hoke's law. F is equal to what? Kx. The feet was drag force. Fd is equal to negative b raised to the power n, where n can either be equal to 1 or 2 depending upon the speed of the object. n is 1 for low speeds and the 2 for high speeds. What's uh, Drag force. We actually, we haven't done any example on this in class yet and on this. So the examples we are going to do now will rely on the first three. Ian, yes, please. On the string force, isn't there another formula that says one, one half kx square? Now, one half kx square is the work done by a spring force. Work done by spring force. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Now, the examples we are going to do now will heavily just rely on the first three. So, let's get going. Let's look at this example. It says that a block is pulled at a constant speed. Now, what does it mean when an object is moving at a constant speed? In a straight line, means that acceleration is zero. If the acceleration is zero, it implies that what? That force equals zero. That the net external force is also equal to zero. Great. Um, a block is pulled at a constant speed along a rough level surface by a rope that makes an angle of theta with respect to the horizontal. The applied force along the rope is F. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the block and the surface is mu. The question is draw a free body diagram in the box in the in the box space above showing all the forces acting on the block. Now we know that the box is moving in that direction, right? Yeah. This is the direction of motion. So the forces acting on the block this is the weight downwards, the normal force upwards, and you have friction backwards. So if we draw a free body diagram, it will look somewhat like this. This is F forward, FK backwards. mg and the n. This angle here is theta. Now it is worthwhile for you to recognize, note that this is the free body diagram. To recognize that we can resolve this force f into two components. You have the horizontal component, this is f cosine theta. And you have the vertical component. This is F sine theta. Yes, please. So um, you mentioned in class that we should not resolve on the free body diagram. Yeah, don't resolve on the free body so diagram. On the force diagram? Yeah, you could resolve on the force diagram. The reason is because most often in the college board, based on mm -hmm. their instructions, they often don't want you to resolve on the free body diagram. So you could draw your free body diagram as instructed and draw another diagram on the side where you could resolve your forces. But also, it is important for you to keep that diagram where the greater 
can see because it will help the grader to follow your solution. Okay. All right. Um, so we have we have a situation where we've been asked to develop or to derive an expression for the constant force f required for the mass to slide at what constant velocity in terms of g m theta g m theta and there's something else here um, the formatting took it away and mu I think it's mu here yep and mu so let's do that so I'm going to draw back the free body diagram here so you could see this is F MG FK N and that is theta you realize that we could resolve this force into two like we said before this is F cosine theta this is F sine theta do you understand okay great now the sum of forces in the x direction will be equal to what f cosine theta minus f of k and this will be equal to zero because the object is moving with a constant what velocity so this would mean that f cosine theta is equal to f of k let's keep this in mind uh, let's not circle it let's just call this one now the summation of f y will be equal to what n plus f sine theta minus mg all of this should be equal to y zero let us call this two we know that by definition f of k is defined as what mu k n in this case it's just gonna be equal to mu n right yes. but what is n from equation two we see that n is equal to mg minus f sine theta right from this equation yes. so this would mean that f of k will be equal to mu mg minus mu f the sine of theta do you see that so if we then take this and fit it up there we will end up with an expression like this is f cosine theta equal to mu mg minus mu f sine theta let me go to the next page so recall we have f cosine theta all equal to mu mg minus mu f sine theta we could take the terms that contain f to one side of the equation that is f cosine theta plus mu f sine theta all equal to mu mg which would mean that f bracket cosine theta plus mu sine theta all of this should be equal to mu mg therefore f should be equal to mu mg divided by cosine theta plus mu sine theta so that is the value for the first f now if you recall you realize that n is equal to mg minus 
f sine theta, right? So n will be equal to mg minus f, which is mu mg divided by cosine theta plus mu sine theta multiplied by, is it sine or cosine? Sine. Sine. Sine theta. So we can simplify. If we simplify, we will end up with something like n equal to mg cosine theta plus mu mg sine theta minus mu mg sine theta all divided by cosine theta plus mu sine theta. This cancels off with that and the normal force n will be equal to mg cosine theta divided by cosine theta plus mu sine theta. You could leave it this way or you could divide the numerator and the denominator by cosine theta. If you do that, n becomes mg all divided by 1 plus mu tan theta. That is the value for n. Right? If we know the value for n, can we calculate the value for fk is equal to mu n, right? That should just be mu mg divided by 1 plus mu tan theta. This is the expression for what? The friction force. Clear? Let's look at the last problem of today. <clears throat> this is quite an interesting one. It's coupled. A block of mass M lies on a plane inclined at an angle theta with the horizontal. In figure A, a force of magnitude F is applied on the block parallel to the inclined plane. In figure B, a force of magnitude F is applied horizontal to the block as shown in the diagram above. Suppose the coefficient of sliding friction between the block and the plane is mu. Express your answers in terms in terms of sum or all of m, theta, mu, and fundamental constants. The first thing that we will do here is just to draw out. Right. Is the inclined plane rough or smooth? Rough, because it's given us why the coefficient of sliding friction. So let's draw the first diagram. This is mg. This is n. And uh, this will be um, our F key. Here, this is mg. And this will be our F key. N is acting like that. In both cases, that is our x-axis, that is our y-axis. This is our x, this is our y-axis. So question number one. In the diagram below, rep the diagram below represents the block on the inclined plane. Uh, we need to draw a free body diagram and level all the forces acting on the block. So a, first di a free body diagram will represent the blocks by a dot that is mg remember that let me do this our our axis this is our x this is our y if we do that we have here mg n fk mg fk
So these are the free, the free body diagram for this. Now the thing I want to add here is we already drew the diagram before, so I'm gonna just modify this. This angle is theta. This angle is theta. So we can resolve the weight here into two. This is this is gonna be mg cosine theta, and this will be mg sine theta. Similarly here, we'll have mg cosine theta, and we'll have here mg sine theta. Now the cool thing about this is, this force can be resolved into two. If you look at it carefully, This is our X and our Y. If you superimpose that here, X, Y, this angle is theta. So F can be resolved as this force downward, which will be F sine theta, and this force in this direction. Or well, let me just use here, which will be F cosine theta. I don't want to write here because I already have this guy here. Do you understand the diagram? Sorry, the, in order to change the direction of the force, the force required we haven't changed the direction if you look at this force it's acting in this direction so one component is along the plane one component is down right mm -hmm. so if we do this correctly for this for B look up everybody for B the summation of fx will be equal to f cosine of theta acting upwards minus mg sine theta minus f of k This force is acting upward, this is acting downward, this is acting downward, great. Now, the summation of Fy will be equal to what? N minus F sine theta minus Mg cosine theta. I think I've got everything covered. Going downwards, going downwards. Okay, yep, I've got everything covered. Now, for this guy, for this guy, we have the summation of Fx will be equal to F minus Mg sine theta minus Fk and the summation of Fy kind of refusing to write and the summation of Fy will be equal to what? N minus mg cosine theta and that would be it the next question says derive expression for the blocks acceleration as a function of m theta f mu and g in both cases on which is greater now in case one we know that for case a 
we know that the summation of Fy is zero, which implies that n is equal to mg cosine theta. We know that the summation of Fx is equal to ma, which means that if you look back here, Fx is all of this, which is F minus mg sine theta minus mu k will be equal to ma. But then we know that fk is just mu mg. Well, let me not dive to the solution. It's just mu n, which will be mu mg cosine theta. Therefore, f minus mg sine theta minus mu mg cosine theta is equal to what? A, M A, which means that the acceleration in case A will be equal to F minus Mg sine theta minus mu Mg cosine theta all divided by what? M. This is the acceleration for the object in case A. Now let's see what happens in case B, we know that the summation of Fy is equal to zero, which would mean Fy in case B is N, all of that, it's N minus F sine theta minus Mg cosine theta. All of this is zero. Which means that n will be equal to what? F sine theta plus mg cosine theta. Hence, fk will be equal to what? Mu f sine theta plus mu mg cosine theta. This is the friction force for case B. Then this would mean that the summation of Fx is equal to Ma, which implies, what is Fx? Fx is F cosine theta minus Mg sine theta minus K. So you have F cosine theta minus Mg sine theta minus Fk. All of this should be equal to Ma, which means that F cosine theta minus Mg sine theta minus what is fk fk is given by mu f sine theta so we have mu f sine theta minus mu mg, mu mg cosine theta all of this should be equal to ma now look at this acceleration this is f and all of that so we have here f cosine theta minus mu f sine theta minus bracket mg sine theta plus mu mg cosine theta all of this should be equal to m so um, you will have here f bracket cosine theta minus mu sine theta minus mg this is sine theta plus mu cosine theta all of this should be equal to ma and therefore the acceleration a will be equal to f bracket cosine theta minus mu sine theta minus mg sine theta plus mu cosine theta all of this divided by m so this is the acceleration in case b so which one is greater looking at these two expressions this is the acceleration in case a and this is the acceleration in case b remember that you can still represent this as a equal to f minus mg 
bracket sine theta plus mu cosine theta all divided by m. Then you will see a correlation. The correlation is, do we have this? Is f greater or less than this? This will be answered if we can answer the question, is this positive or negative? This whole constant here is positive. So this... Does it depend on... On, on the angle? Yeah. It depends on the angle. It totally depends on the angle, so I'm not sure about this. I'll have to re look at the problem. Mg over M. So actually, we could conclude that the acceleration of E is greater than the acceleration of B. The next question Derive the expression for the force if the block slides up with a constant speed. All we have to do is equate this to what? Zero. zero. So equate that to zero and solve. So give me the expression here. The acceleration of E is F minus M Mg all divided by m, right? If that is equal to 0, implies that f will be equal to mg cosine theta plus mu sine theta easy. This is f of a. What about the acceleration of b? What is the expression? f bracket cosine all of this divided by m. Yes. If this is equal to zero, and then this would imply that f cosine theta minus mu sine theta will be equal to what? mg sine theta plus mu cosine theta, which means that f will be equal to mg bracket sine theta minus mu cosine theta divided by cosine theta minus mu sine theta simple right to calculate f now and uh, this concludes the problem solving session today thank you for your time